Hello guys and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. And yes, I have been waiting here for a long time <laughs> for a golem to spawn just so I could make this intro. And yeah, the, the, the iron farm is finished and working fine. Uh, and I also made a couple of changes here. So this is all the iron that we have so far. I have been AFK here for some time. I noticed uh, that a lot of uh, a lot of zombies started spawning uh, around here because of the villagers up there so uh, they they usually come to this place so I placed a hopper here so they die from the sunlight and uh, down here I can collect some stuff so yeah uh, we don't have much for now but we also don't care a lot for those things it's just in case we need something for emeralds like getting one or two emeralds uh, and I included something else here yeah, besides the, the, the iron farm, we also have uh, this. Da da. Yeah, uh, since they, they were trying to go to the village, anyways, I just moved uh, the, the food farm here. So it has been producing a lot and it's quite efficient. And I am really happy with this. And it's good because now, <laughs> today, we can finally do things without the villagers because it's really, really annoying. Uh, running after the villagers, trapping them, placing them in a minecart that they can move and we don't even know if this is a bug. So in today's episode, we want to go to the nether. And we're going to do this the hard way, okay? So my plan is uh, we will build a small and once again improvised uh, sugarcane farm. And then we are going to get some paper. And then we are going to trade the villagers for some awesome pickaxes. Uh, with the emeralds that we're gonna get and then we're also going to use the diamond pickaxes to mine some obsidian and then we will build a portal and then we will visit the nether and get some quartz and magma blocks because I want to do some experiments uh, before anything I know about uh, the trick with the portals I know that we can use uh, lava and water but I just want to make it a little more interesting by making the, the sugarcane farm and and trading with the villagers um, so this place here is not gonna work for uh, or well as a food farm anymore so I will plant sugarcane here just because I have already dug the area so I just have to adapt this so let's start by removing everything here and I will be right back oh I didn't realize my inventory was full and that is because I wanted to craft uh, our first stack of pistons guys <laughs> yes this is really traditional to me so I want to do this on camera so let's grab one stack of iron from our amazing little iron farm and we're going to craft uh, our first pistons here unfortunately we don't have sticky pistons which is uh, what I actually want but we can't have everything in the third episode right uh, okay, I never remember how to do that. I think it. I think it goes like this. Uh, but the ma the materials are correct at least. Okay, first stack of pistons, guys. So yeah, tradition, tradition. All right, guys. I guess I'm ready to show you the design I'm going to to use here. Uh, so yeah, you can see that those pistons are budded. So yeah, any sugar cane growing in front of them, we activate them. But as you can see, they activate extremely fast and reset, but uh, it only happens in the area where you build the circuit, actually. So, uh, where, <laughs> where the action happened, I'm sorry. So, if you pay attention to here, you can see that those pistons don't get activated. So, we were going to have a, a, a long line of pistons, and uh, it will only activate the piston where it needs uh, to activate, of course, and the two pistons uh, next to it. Uh, this, this thing can break sometimes if you, if you spam it. So, yeah, if you get too much, uh, too much stuff growing at the same time, this will break. Uh, which means we need to, from time to time, we need to send a random signal uh, back here or use a timer so that those things will reset. And if it's not broken and you send the signal back here, nothing happens. So this is a really good uh, poor man's design because it doesn't require slime blocks, it's budded, uh, it's cheap to build, you can see everything that you need here. 
uh, it's expandable, it doesn't need quartz, so it's really something that you can use to automate sugarcane production in your first or second day playing the game, which is pretty cool. And this is what we're going to build uh, inside this area now. So I will now collect all the materials, do all the jibbity jabbity jibbity, and we are going to have automated sugarcane things. I think this is big enough, uh, considering this it will eventually be destroyed. <laughs> so yeah guys, I'm doing a lot of temporary stuff here. And I actually had to build this thing twice because I misplaced the structure the first time. So I had to uh, move everything off by one block. And now I want to show you this in action. So maybe we can hop on top here and use torches. So yeah, you can see that everything will be harvested instantly here and only the pistons that really matter are going to are going to fire uh, and of course the one piston will also push this line of pistons back there so this is a very interesting uh, concept and let me show you guys the machine just in case you guys want to do this in our in your world um, so on this side we have a bunch of regular pistons so no sticky pistons facing one side and then you need a redstone block here you can try to change this into a regular block but uh, you can create a clock here you would, you would have to wire it differently to make it cheaper uh, so this repeater is on one tick uh, use you use a slab to send the signal up there so that you don't power this guy here and that's that's about it then you have your automated instant super fast harvester uh, would be a great thing you know what to have uh, lit pumpkins here so jack-o-lanterns yeah that's that's what they're called uh, because we would have be we would have solid blocks here that would also emit light so we probably have to take care of the situation using uh, uh, regular torches right so okay now I have to figure out uh, the water streams shouldn't be a problem then bring some sugarcane here and also I will probably need to use uh, this minecart hopper that I broke from the, the the farm we had previously here but this is it for now uh, and we should be done pretty quickly I guess I'm finished uh, with the redstone. So we now have a collection system and it's activated on demand. So the minecart's not running all the time. So let's, let me just do a demonstration. So it breaks and the minecart goes. Uh, and then it will pick up something uh, either there or here and then it will store it here. Uh, we don't need more than that so I'm trying to <laughs> Uh, to use the resources I have now and not spend a lot of time uh, mining and doing all the boring stuff. So yeah, now it's just a matter of bringing the water here, placing the uh, sand or dirt here and covering the things and making it look a little bit more decent. And we will have sugarcane for ages. Okay, now that the farm has produced something, we're going to trade with the villagers. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I have been harvesting from here and soon enough we will get back there and check out what this machine had produced for us. Okay, so time to go ahead and try to find that pickaxe. Ho oh, ho, what do we have here? Unbreaking 3. I think this is a great trade. Yes, Unbreaking 3 at this, at this point will help me a lot. So let's try to get some emeralds first. I know guys this is not 25 or 24, not the best trade, but I'm just trying to save time here and if he doesn't want to trade anymore I will find another guy. Of course I won't do absurd trades like 40 paper but uh, yeah this guy is fine and I need to unlock other things from him because I will obviously want to keep this librarian. Uh, books, yeah sure, we need to enchant this book so maybe let's get a bunch of them and yeah. I will spend a lot of time around here. <laughs> what? I don't even know what this enchantment does. Sweeping Edge 3. Is this a good thing? 
I have to I have to look this I have to look this up whoa I know this is good and this guy also has a super cheap trade uh, okay we are out of paper but we have a bunch of emeralds to trade now so we will probably be able to, to buy the pickaxe if we find someone selling it and I also decided to trade a lot with this guy because I want to get to know those guys a little bit more and apparently they sell maps which is useless but I'm not sure what is a ocean explorer map or a woodland explorer map so if you guys know anything about this uh, please tell me in the comments uh, because uh, this is still the beginning of the game and I can't afford buying those things just for fun because I want to uh, to progress uh, a little bit faster so yeah I will try to find the guy uh, selling the, the pickaxe now and I will be right back with you oh okay guys I had to head back uh, to the base and bring some coal and basically I even started trading iron because I really I really want this thing so I found this uh, which is not bad at all so we are going to buy everything we can okay I think this uh, this is money well spent so yeah we finally can proceed with the plane and let's go get that obsidian this is going to be so pleasant Oh man, how do you craft a shield? Thanks, Gamepedia. Okay, so I decided to build the portal here. Uh, I also got a little extra obsidian because I wanted to make it three by three and I like the view from here. And I, I don't really know where to build a portal, but I know that this village is a place we are going to be visit visiting a lot. So, okay, I guess it's time to do it. So. Without further ado, let's meet the nether. What are we going to find? Will we spawn inside a fortress? Will we... What, what will happen? I hope it doesn't get too laggy. It's super laggy to me. The achievement we need to go deeper. Okay. Okay. And I already can see quartz here. I hope not to find a gas right away because I don't have a bow. I see a lot of quartz. I don't see any magma blocks though. I'm not sure if you, if I need to go uh, to the lower levels of this to get the lava blocks. So yeah. Also, so sand. Do we need so sand for anything right now? Um, okay, okay. Let's let's mine some quartz and get out of this horrible place as soon as possible. Oh, I wish I had Silk Touch, and I also found Soul Sand, and our portal is right there. Oh, the magma blocks are right down there, really next to us. Okay, okay, this shouldn't be too hard, I just need to be careful. Alright, time to mine those things for the first time. I hope we don't need Silk Touch, okay, we don't. Let's see what, oh, the damage is pretty quick. <laughs> it's cool, but they're really easy to mine, those blocks here, yes, I guess we're gonna have a lot of those. Wow, man, I'm so happy and impressed with this block. Look at the amount of blocks I already have, I just mined this, this region here, and I don't think I will be coming back here so soon. Um, one thing I didn't know about these blocks, you can touch them from the side and you won't take any damage, and something I saw on other less places, you can actually crouch on top of them and you also won't take any damage. They are really easy to, bind, uh, to mine. And I guess it's time for us to head back now because the one thing I don't wanna do in this episode is to die with all the resources I have now because this is going to be awesome. We have almost one full stack of quartz and this is going to be enough for us to begin doing things. What happened? What happened to this thing? Okay. And all right, let's head back to the base and start crafting some comparators, guys. Oh, and ladders, maybe. Hmm, I'm having ideas here. How long will it take to damage this guy here? Wow. <laughs> well, this thing acts quickly, so it's a lot of small damage dealt in a, in a quite frequent uh, 
fashion. All right, so let's try to push this guy. Oh, we don't even need to do that. They are not smart enough. So this is much easier than lava. Just takes longer. <laughs> A lot longer, I guess. Huh, interesting. Okay, I guess we're gonna we're gonna head home with a little bit extra iron. Wow, and this literally takes forever. <laughs> well, not literally, of course. Yes, yes, give the flower to nobody. Man, this guy is strong. <laughs> not stronger than a magma block. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Dun, da, da, dun, da, dun, dun. Yes, the revolution begins. And now, actually, I want to do something else. I want to do these. Ha ha! Ha ha! We have observer blocks now, guys. We have observers and we have comparators, and we will become very powerful with this. <laughs> no more permanent clocks for you. And you will get an item sorter and it's not just any item sorter so let me update you guys on a few changes that I just made to the iron farm so first uh, let's see where can I go maybe here okay inside here uh, we have the magma blocks uh, but uh, at the very beginning there where the water sources are we have regular blocks so that the, the magma blocks won't uh, evaporate the water from them from those so we don't lose the water sources and I believe this helps killing the, the iron golems a little bit faster so that we can get more spawns inside this thing and this thing uh, is not is not expensive at all so uh, here we have the item sorter uh, the traditional one uh, with the 18 items and yeah we will store all the roses and uh, we have a secondary control here if this ever overflows then a clock is activated down there and the items are thrown away so yeah we only we only throw away the poppies if this chest ever gets full uh, this will probably not happen because uh, by if I have all that iron I will probably be building my second uh, my second iron farm which is a lot more powerful than this one but I wanted to uh, to spend some time and try to figure out a, a interesting circuit to do this because I want to keep the poppies for crafting and things like that but I also want uh, it to automate uh, the item item disposal okay uh, finally I guess it's time we have a look at the, the sugarcane farm it has been running for some time now I uh, have been AFK, have been building things spent a lot of time designing that, that clock there uh, to to work as I wanted to to okay so the sugarcane farm is down here yeah I don't think we're going to be that lucky and uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be lucky enough to see this being activated right now which would be pretty cool but uh, yeah here's the chest uh, this is the amount we collected so far so yeah this is working it's a very small farm and I need to collect some more redstone dust and other components I need to be crafted uh, so I can expand these farms and I also need to find a definitive place for them because uh, basically everything I have been doing is temporary uh, this is not my final uh, place to be yeah this thing's working fine as well clock ac clock activates on demand let's see how how much we have yeah we got a lot of chicken from this place here so yeah I'm pretty satisfied I think this was a kind of cool episode I had a lot of fun designing the things visiting the nether and I really hope that you guys also enjoyed your time with me so thank you very much once again for watching me and see you on the next episode bye <laughs> <laughs>